Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Good evening, everybody. Once again, back in the studio. Hi, everyone. This is going to be episode seven. Yes. Episode seven. Here we go. It's Magic Kingdom part two. It's too big to do in one. It's huge. (laughs) We'd be here for hours. And that's what we warned them in the last episode. This park, well, these set, this whole resort is monstrous. Yeah. It's It's days. Gosh. So, that's okay, though. It's a big investment, and that's why you want your bang for your buck. So. Exactly. And you don't, you, you, and it's, yeah, like I said, it's big enough to take your time. Don't want to skimp on mm-hmm. anything because the amount that you have spent on this is, well, significant. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, you know, you, if you haven't figured that out yet before you bought the tickets, there you go. Well, we joked about the idea. We're not going to take out a mortgage to do this particular thing. And <laughs> well, lo and behold, <laughs> well, with this experience, it, I don't see how going cheap can give you the exact, give you the experience. I would, it's possible. Yeah. I would say being strategic about how you spend your money. Sure. I mean, budgeting, but, you know. Yeah, just budgeting. being smart. And that's something we're going to address tonight, yeah. especially with the Genie Plus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about it. So we left you off <clears throat> last episode on Magic Kingdom in Liberty Square. Right. Um, We did we did not talk Haunted Mansion, so we can hit that oh. and then our way around. So we had to hit Haunted Mansion. <clears throat> and we're going to continue to work our way um, clockwise around the park. Right. So we're going to be going right. <laughs> we are now going to be discussing the difference between the Crump Mansion versus mm-hmm. the Gracie Mansion. Yes. Yes, believe it or not, if you watch the the uh, Haunted Mansion movie, they do address the differences between the Crump Mansion and the Gracie Mansion. Yeah. So this park has the Gracie Mansion. Yes. And Disneyland has the the Crump, or Raleigh Crump, who was one of the original Imagineers who put on that. Um, he's he has his own window now. He just recently passed away. Yeah, moment yeah. there, but he's a brilliantly creative person in his time and the things that he came up with. What were the other attractions that he he, he worked on Pirates a little bit, right? Uh, he worked on Pirates of the Caribbean. He also teamed up with Mary Blair and did Small That's World. Right. He did the World of Motion um, attraction for the 1964 World's Fair yeah. with General Motors. He did um, portions of the railroad mm-hmm. in Disneyland. Okay. Um, this guy is... He was prolific. Yeah. He just... Well, Walt kept everybody busy, so oh, yeah. <laughs> he had a lot to do. Yeah. One of the little kind of nods to Mr. Crump is the one-eyed cat, the red-eyed cat yes. in the Disneyland Haunted Mansion. So you'll see yes. kind of this cat on the statue, and that was something that Mr. Crump wanted to include. And so... Right. Um, it was actually he's meant... there. Yeah, exactly. It was... <laughs> He, okay, the one-eyed cat was actually meant to be there as a uh, <clears throat> portion of the Museum of the Weird. Weird, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of, in the attic scene in Disneyland's Haunted Mansion, there is also a nod to Raleigh Crump in a little bitty figurine of the Candleman. Oh. Yes. I've got a quick, brief video of it. In the last time that Kat and I went to Haunted Mansion, and I pointed out real quick and said, hey, there it is. And that's about as far as we get with it. It's very blurry, and it's like looking for Bigfoot. There's the Candleman. So, you know, there there we are. So there's differences between the two rides, um, as we did last time between Pirates and with Haunted uh, Walt Disney World and Disneyland. I... (sighs) I actually kind of like both of these equally. Okay. Um, I like, and here's the reason why. I like the Disneyland 
Haunted Mansion because it's a little bit longer. Sure. Um, and all of these kind of Easter egg nods that are in there from the night, you know, it being one of the oldest rides in the park. But I like the Walt Disney World Haunted Mansion because the outside queue, there's a lot of fun things to be interactive with. And, you know, if you're going to stand in line for 45 minutes, you need something to do. And they provide that for you. So there's some fun little, there's actually a murder mystery that you can follow along in there by looking at the um, tombstone, like the bust heads as you enter. There's kind of clues and you can go around and figure out who done it. And then there's some... Um, kind of inside jokes and things that so it, the Very queue true. is pretty cool um at walt disney world the ride's a little bit shorter but they're both to me equally cool to mm-hmm. to ride so yeah <clears throat> uh, another difference about the t- the two um attractions is that during the time of the end of september all the way through to the beginning of january the Disneyland Haunted Mansion goes over, mm. goes into an overlay of Nightmare Before Christmas. Right. And that one is one of my favorites, and it's also one of Kat's favorites. And it's cool. Again, Kat and I, when we wrote it, it had the overlay, and yeah, I'll incorporate a chunk yeah, of it. Yeah, and they only do know. the overlay in Disneyland. They do not do it in Walt Disney World. Right. And yeah, I'll incorporate a chunk, like, right about here. <laughs> They sell little shoulder pads of him. Right on. Welcome to my Christmas delight. Look, Zero, I think they like our Christmas. Have you been naughty or nice? I don't know. Love you, Sally. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Jack Skellington's around. And exactly. The graveyard is pretty cool. So Jack and Sally are in the graveyard. Yeah. They've changed it all into this big, huge Christmassy tableau. Uh, the and Madame Leota scene is a little different. Yeah. The ninth day of Christmas, my good love. Yes, so exactly it's, it's really if it feels like it's always overlaid but <laughs> because of the times we because go. the times we go but there is it's about half the year it's regular and half the year it's overlay and well and that I, again with the originality in disney world of the haunted mansion yes it is similar or it's the same but it's shorter and there are a few effects that are much different than what you find mm. in in Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Um, like the Escher stairs with mm-hmm. the ghostly footprints that walk up over your head. That's not in Disneyland. The busts that the eyes oh, follow, follow you, you are on the ride and not in the queue. Yeah. yeah. In, in the, they're in the queue in Disneyland, but not... They're on the ride in Disney World. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there, there's some of that happening. Um, the, port, I, the portrait gallery is in the queue at Disneyland as right, well. Right. So instead of on the ride. Exactly. And honestly, you know, it, each ride has their thing. Each ride has their charm. Each ride has something that's important to those people who have ridden it and is nostalgically important to them. And that's fantastic. And I, and I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um this is not necessarily going into Paris and saying how London is better, you know. <laughs> no, they're just, I mean, they're they are so similar that if you didn't know the differences, you'd feel like it was the exact same ride. Right. But there are little tiny things that make it a little different. And like I said, I find them equally enjoyable. So oh, sure. it's, a, it's a have to ride for me every time we go. Indeed. Um, it is w- uh, worth a lightning light well genie plus do you want to get into genie plus now since we're kind of Um, heading more into the park or you want to kind of wait till the end since you mentioned it you might as well go for it so genie plus is the um piece in the app that helps you plan your experience um there are it's a extra cost and um so there is um 
rides that if you buy Genie Plus that are included in it, and then there are rides that are, no matter what they are, you always have to buy a, a lightning lane or it's equivalent to the lightning lane. Let's right. put it that way. Exactly. Um, so that includes like Tron, Space Mountain, uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. I'm forgetting them, but yeah, anyway, some of those kind of high marquee rides um, that no matter, even if you buy Genie Plus, you still have to buy an extra added ticket. Right, so. and it's, as a few YouTubers and a few influencers have called them, the fancy rides. And, yeah. So, again, it's how you want to spend your money. Sure. We'll go with that. Sure. I personally feel that the amount of rides that you get with Genie Plus and Magic Kingdom, it is worth it to buy it because you get... um you get a big bang for your buck with it and it makes it it makes it a little bit easier makes you a little more efficient with some of your lines you can stack them so you have you kind of plan your day based on how you um put your genie plus rides together and it kind of dictates your space the cool thing about the app is it has a location sensor so it it knows where you're at and then it'll kind of help you plot your course so you're not running all over the place you do it in a a really um, methodical way so that is Genie Plus. Um, there's a lot of YouTube uh, hosts and vloggers who've put a lot of time into Genie Plus. So I don't know if we need to just beat it here, but um, check out other YouTubers who've gone through it and have really dissected it to figure out how it works. Being a user of it, I say it is worth it in this park. And if you were only going to do it in one park, this is the park I would do it in. Agreed. Um, and a lot of YouTubers agree with you on that mm-hmm. as well. It's it's like, honestly, Genie Plus was made, engineered for this park and I believe a couple of the Asian parks. Yes, like Hong Kong and yes. Japan use it and, big time. And Disney Sea. Yeah, Disney Sea. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's for the volume that they have. Genie Plus is a is a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am so old school, and I'm one of those where it's like I've already paid my admission. You mean I've got to pay for something else to get on a ride? No. That's not what I'm going to do. But you like standing in lines. Yeah, I'm a queue guy. You like that. So. Yeah. Again, you know, they they made the queue the way they did for a reason. I think everybody should go enjoy it. <laughs> I really do. I do have to say, though, for some of the, the fancy rides, if we're going to steal a term, we can steal that term. Um, <laughs> Sorry, but, Mammoth Club. Sorry. <laughs> we love you, though. We love you. We want to be your friends. I was gonna, Molly, Alan, Max. Can we Mwah! can we be your friends? Please. Can, can, we we want to come. We want to come visit. Please and thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, but like for Tron, <laughs> yes, do it. For Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, you don't like that one very much. I love that one. Yes, do it. I've not been on it yet. <gasps> nope, I've not been on it. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna fix that. Okay, sure. We're going to fix that. It's cute. It's was fun. It, it's very Was just... it even operational when we went? When you guys went for Katie's uh, band trip, yes. It was? Yes. Okay. I had no interest yeah. in it whatsoever. See, there you go. So. It's a fun, it's a really fun one. It's actually kind of that borderline if you have littles that are wanting to ride a roller coaster, but are a little intimidated by the big coasters. Like, I think it's it's a good introdu- introductory fast ride okay it it uh combos dark ride plus roller coaster and the the fast parts aren't overwhelming now see for me that would make it worth it yeah and that's what doesn't make it worth it for me for slinky dog dash it that was just a basic coaster yeah Yeah. and i've seen the videos of it i mean i i did your video for you of it it was cute. It's cute. It's, it's fun. It looks yeah. just silly just, fun. Yeah, that's what it is. Just yeah. silly Slinky fun. Dog. We'll we'll and, save Slinky Dog for Hollywood though. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> um, but with Seven Doors Mine Train, I, since I didn't know that there was actually a dark ride mm-hmm. portion, there were animatronics in yeah. it, and it's like yeah. okay, then then maybe yeah, yeah. I've got to give this yeah. some it's attention. It's really cute. It's you know? it's fun, and there's some um, kind of nods to the Snow White ride in Disneyland. Well, there should be. That they incorporate in this one. Good. So it's good. It's very cute. I like it a right lot. On. So now that we've ridden Haunted Mansion, we're going to move our way into Fantasyland, which is where we start beginning to really 
kind of get the bang for our buck for using Genie Plus, which is why I brought it yeah. up now. Um, <laughs> because Fantasyland, I don't know what it was with the design of the parks, whether it's Disneyland or Magic Kingdom, and why they make Fantasyland the bottlenecks that they are. It was intentional to slow people down. It's awful. I know. <laughs> I don't even yeah, know how I, to candy I, coat it. The, the, it's no, just the, awful. There's no way to candy coat this. It's this, so bad. We, we always joke about the Disney Death March at the end of the day. It's so bad. No, the real Death March is through Fantasyland. Is through Fantasyland in, in either park. In either coast. It's okay. So bad. That bottleneck that is right before oh. and after the carousel oh. is unreal. It's so bad. So in Disney World, Fantasyland, you have um, Small World, you have Peter Pan, you have Philhar Magic, yep. kind of all in this little space and you get a um, sad sad excuse for small world yes i still write it though because i like small world and it's a lot it's great with littles but it is but compared to disneyland yeah sorry it's that facade, shorter yes it's shorter that facade i know is disappointing it's because they put they put most of that inside so you see the clock tower and all of that kind of in an inside portion yeah in the queue in the queue yeah it's it's not terrible but i'm a lot of people pass on small world i'm not a passer on small world he is um the queue is sad disappointing and dirty one of the fun things, though, with it, I'm going to put this out there. All right. So there's the Pinocchio's restaurant. Yeah. One of the um, places you can sit has bay windows. And if you sit by the bay window, they have little signs that you can put up at the table to have people in the boats as they go by you, like, wave at me, poke your earball, like something like really weird things like that. And people right. will do things at you. So it's, it makes it a, like an interactive p- p- uh, portion of the ride, which is a lot of fun and very cute and really unique. Um, so that's kind of fun, uh, unique to Disney World. But again, Small World, a lot. Of, it's how you feel about Small World. Exactly, and see, that's the thing is because with Small World, it doesn't hold. It doesn't hold the same for me that it does for everybody else. Well, I write it. I love you know? it because it's Mom's favorite. Well, yeah, but it's an OG from the World's Fair. It is, and so. that's the only thing. That will get me back on that ride is because of the history. Well, and the Disneyland And it has one. to be the Disneyland Yeah, and because it's way longer in Disneyland. Yes. And it's just, it is, it is oh, beautiful. Speaking of another uh, Raleigh Com- Crump thing. Yeah. The Tower of the of the Four Winds. Mm-hmm. That was out in front of the Small World. I'm not sure if it's there anymore. That was his, okay. that was his sculpture. There you go. So that's cool. But anyway, it's, that's another compare contrast ride, you know. I, I like to ride it because we all have a lot of littles in our family, and it's a great ride for littles. You know, everybody dances. It's just a lot of smiley faces. It's really cute. It's in a boat. We get to get on a boat on water, so yay. Um, but there you go. That's my opinion on it. I like it. I ride it. Uh, I don't necessarily. I'm Here's going to be you know, a hot take. Everybody's going to fight me on this one. I don't necessarily have to ride Peter Pan every single time. <laughs> That is one I can pass on. I agree with you. <laughs> In either park, by the way. It's identical, though. I agree. It's a, it's a same length, same layout, the whole thing. Yeah, it is. I, um, it is. Um, and it's always th- like a 7,000-minute wait. Because everybody wants to ride, ride it. it and yeah. La, 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 la. And yeah, okay, in Disneyland, I will make more of an effort to ride it than I will at Disney World. And the reason is, is because it's an OG ride Mm -hmm. in Disneyland. So in Fantasyland, this is where you're going to see a lot of same rides and where you can do a lot of compare and contrasting. So if you only go to one coast or the other, this is an area where you'll get a lot of very similar to what Disneyland is like. So it doesn't feel really weird. A fun thing, though, that is in Walt Disney World is the Bell Storytime. I'm probably butchering the name of it. It's an interactive retelling of Beauty and the Beast where... The, and I did it for the first time the, my last trip, and it was really cool. Um, they pull people out of the audience. You get to be part of the story. You get to help, to help become a character. Um, the cabinet t- comes to life and talks to you. There's this fascinating piece where 
um, you when you get pulled into the story where the mirror, not the handheld mirror, there's a mirror that you look into, dis, like dissolves and disintegrates magically into an opening into the I wall. I want to see that. <laughs> so I want to see that it so is badly. So cool. Like the the technology for that is really amazing so and then you get to meet bell and you get to have this one-on-one interaction with bell and you surprise her it's really kind of it's very cute especially if you have a little princess lover in the group um highly recommend it you get pictures so you get photo pass pictures which are really great if you want to get into a place and cool off and have a sit and a little rest this is also very good for that um so it was a it was a nice little surprise Okay. Of something to do so it was cool okay. and that's in fantasy land that's right on the other side of small world um as you go through there um kind of close to the carousel and that is something i definitely want to go see i have been wanting to see that for a while since i saw the video that, oh, that you yeah. guys had and when i was doing the editing of it i didn't really want to cut anything out but i had to you had to yeah because it's a it's a good half an hour experience yeah well it, not only that i mean it, there were just there were just chunks of dead that it didn't translate well to the story and what you were trying to do, but it was like, I wanted to stay, I wanted to stay and hopefully you got more footage of how that mirror turned into a passageway. I couldn't tell you how. Okay. I couldn't I'm, tell you how. It was really cool. I'm sorry, but that's just... It oh. was cool. It was really impressive. So again, like I said, if it's, um, you know, if you have a really great princess lover in the group or you just want a good place to sit down and have a story told to you. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And that's, yeah. It's fun. Well, and okay, I like the fairy tales, okay? And yeah. I like to be told a story. Yeah. I like and the way this is so interactive and Tom being another theater kid like me <laughs> um who helped basically get me into theater in high school. Um he was pulled into a part. <laughs> well, Tom actually was part of the summer production that was my first production yeah. at, in high school yeah. in my freshman year. Yeah, that's how you get yeah. That's how he entered our lives. That's right. <laughs> and I really, really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, Tom got to do a thing. He got to be part of the whole interaction. And it's just one of those things with me. It's like, oh, for crying out loud, sign me up. It was fun. I will be knocking kids over to <laughs> get to it. But I won't. I won't for real. There's not many. For real, they but. pull adults and there's not many adults who volunteer for pe- parts. So if you volunteer for a part, they're pretty much going to be like, yes, please. So <laughs> Tom had to be. The reason Tom got picked is because he happened to be coming in after. Like he and I were the last two through because I was trying to figure out how the dumb mirror thing worked right and he had, he got at the end and the guy was like oh come on and so tom's like okay <laughs> that's really how he got picked so anyway it was cool yep. so and that's in fantasy land as well yeah it's the way you do it folks it's how you get disney magic <laughs> and you get it really disney was magic. fun it made it a really cool little thing we were all surprised how neat it was um so the carousel is in there that's another ride that don't necessarily have to ride, right. but right. it's a classic. Okay. okay, but in Disneyland, if there's a time and I'm available to do it in Disneyland, I will ride the carousel in Disneyland. Again, an OG. Uh, well, and it's... I am always going after those rights where Walt's rear end was in a seat, <laughs> okay? And Peter Pan, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, mm-hmm. Alice in Wonderland, and the carousel are four of them that I know Walt was he on. He was on, yeah. I know it. So, anyway. So, in Disney World and Magic Kingdom, there's also Philhar Magic back yes. there. Another yes. great ride to um, go sit in, cool off. It's a 3D experience. If you haven't done it, again, YouTube it. But it's a lot of fun. There's a lot. It's just a whole kind of mashup of Disney musical classics. Um, you can kind of make it a sing-along. Donald's a star. It's just awesome. I bet I'm going to make it a sing-along. Yeah, I <laughs> you and everybody bet else. I am. Okay. So, and then as we keep going through the park, there's some great um, eateries in there. Friar Tucks. Again, I've never had, had the opportunity. I ate there for the first time this last trip. Okay. It's actually kind of a great quick service. I will eat there over Pinocchio. Okay. So that's my, if I was going to give a, another hot take, I would eat at Friar Tucks before I would eat at uh, Pinocchio. Um, a little more 
they do a breakfast. Okay. They serve good. breakfast and they have good, good, good. Um, a kind of biscuits and, or a sausage gravy tater tot lovely thing. That's amazing. They oh. have a good breakfast, Sam. I know, right? Yeah. The, I know. There go the carbs. I know. There, go, remember, the, there we, go the carbs for the rest of the year. we talked about on the 6.5 episode. Yes. You're active enough, so you're good. Um, they have a really lovely um, breakfast sandwich. So it was really, it was nice because we were able to, we got there really early and then we had a moment to have breakfast. See, and, so and it was I, good. I really like that whole yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. You know, it's when you can just stop. Yeah, and which just is relax. important in this park. Oh, finding those moments my to just goodness. stop. Didn't we just hit it again? Didn't we? Mm-hmm. Is it time for a rest? Yes. <laughs> Protect your peace. Yeah. Now, here's where I'm going to actually talk a little bit about this of ver- resting in the park versus resting at the hotel. Now, since for the purposes mm-hmm. of this of this particular trip and our little, I kind of wish we were. We're staying at the Grand Californian. Right. Okay, the Grand, Grand Californian, Floridian. or the Grand Floridian, <laughs> excuse me, Grand Floridian. So since we're staying at the Grand Floridian, it's just a quick, short little ride back over to the or hotel. A walk, even. Exactly. Yeah. Walk it, ride a boat, ride the monorail. monorail. Yep. And since I'm lazy, and well, honestly, for the purposes of this, it's a little hard for me to get around now well, because you, you I'm got... missing a quarter of my leg, on my <laughs> left leg. Um, yeah, I did the math today. It is actually one fourth of my oh, leg. Oh, there you go. Okay. So well, anyway. Math. Uh, may- Yay! <laughs> Tom, are you proud of me? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I know fractions. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard for him to get around so he's going to need some mobility assistance yes, so exactly. it's already going to be challenging putting all those steps in exactly go. and so i'm going to either hit the boat or i'm going to go for the monorail now since i'm going back for a nap it's going to be quicker if i do the boat, boat. i was gonna say the monorail is the last the monorail for... is is the well it yeah it's it's another ride yes yeah. so you know I'm well and if you could ride a monorail that. you're going to but for economics of time you're exactly do the boat. and since i'm just going back to the resort for a rest i'm going to get on the boat i'll head back over Which, to the floridian time out on this if you're there during super hot months that's actually not a bad thing because park hours are a lot later you 11 12 1 o'clock in the morning you can be at the magic at magic kingdom so if you are wanting to be a night owl or, or close it taking a big hunk of time in the middle of the day when it's super hot to go back and rest is a, a, not a bad idea. Siesta time. Yeah. Siesta. Now you understand why they do it. Mm-hmm. You know? So I'm going to go back over to the hotel, and I'm going to ride the boat. I'll get the, It's usually one stop. Usually. Because all the resorts that ring the Seven Seas Lagoon should or do have their own dedicated Tated fleet. Boat. Yeah. So it's just one boat, one or two boats that's traveling back and forth to that resort. And there should be little docks that you can Mm -hmm. hit and go to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Um, From what I understand, at one time, there were four resorts that had boats to Magic Kingdom. The Contemporary, the Polynesian, the Grand Floridian, and Fort Wilderness. Mm -hmm. And they're all back in service, I believe, now. Okay. Contemporary. Was one of the last few to do it. The last trip we were there in July, it wasn't running, huh. but um, everything else, I think it's back now. Okay. If not, it's on the docket too, but yes. Interesting. It was one of the first and now it was one of the last. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's weird. Okay. Anyway, so that, that just a little bit of uh, history on that. Um, but yeah, protecting your peace, like, yeah, that yeah. rest is important. Yeah, and see, this is where it would be nice if they still had the band that played in the lobby mm, over the Grand Floridian. I know, you could just sit in the lobby and hang. Yeah, I could find a nice comfy chair. Get a beverage, a little snackage. Exactly. Sit, watch people, listen to the mm-hmm. band. Unfortunately, they don't have the band anymore. They have the they piano the, player. They do have the piano player, but the band. I know, they are amazing. Okay, and it was a quintet? Yes. Or sextet. Five. It was a quintet. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, and it was brass. Uh-huh. And a saxophone. Yes. Well, brass and wind. Yeah. But yeah, it was... It was big bandish. You like a little well, combo. 
sort of jazz combo turn of the century park band yeah you it's know. cool they're amazing amazing musicians yeah and that's something that i've always said about disney parks is i'd love to just be involved with some of the music that gets mm. to be played just to, and yes at one time i was privileged to do that if alice would reach over there to the bookcase that particular picture right there this is a picture of me in high school with my high school marching band marching down Main Street on July 4th, 1988. I know. I'm going to try and Zoom, but I'm not going to Zoom. I'm in the crowd. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> I'm in the crowd. I did it. Somewhere. I did it. Anyway, um, but yeah, I would just love to be a part of the you know, part of the crew. Part I just, you know, either at yeah, there you go. Either at um <laughs> we make up that. I don't know. Either at Disneyland, Disney World, whichever. I don't care. I just I just want to be involved. <laughs> anyway. So, I've rested. Yes. All I've right. Had my nap. So, we're kind of keeping going that clockwise motion. Um Ariel's Grotto is in here as well. Um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. As we already alluded to, that would be one of those uh, fancy rides. I would get a Genie Plus uh, Lightning Lane ticket for it. I keep calling it Lightning Lane. That's the wrong piece, but whatever. You know well, what I'm talking about. It's what Lightning Lane Used became. To be. um, but I would get I would get it for that, and I get a return time for that. And then you kind of keep going, and then you hit that transition between um, Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. Yep. Um, the one thing they don't have at Disney, well, uh, the Magic Kingdom, is the submarines. Not anymore. They so paved it over. That is not there anymore, but Autopia is there. Again, yeah. that is a ride if you have littles and they want to actually drive a car, because it's a rite of passage for a little, is to drive the Autopias, then do it. Oh, as, sure. As an adult, oh, sure. don't. Oh, lies. I'm lying. There's the um, storybook circus in the oh, back where yeah, you could do where, Goofy's bar, uh, Goofy's um, not Barnstormer. Yeah, yeah Barnstormer. Yeah, that's where it's the. It was the Go Go Gadget yeah. coaster. Yeah, and then time. it's Dumbo is back there. Some awesome character meet and greets are back there. The best character meet and greets of the Fab Five are back there. Oh, they're so good. That okay. one, if you want to chase characters, that's a place to go and getting in there. That's some great ones there. Um, Dumbo is put together a little interesting than it is in Disneyland. So it's it's the circus theme and you can go straight into the queue and straight to the ride. Or if you have littles and you're they're needing kind of space to energy, they have an indoor playground. That you can go and get a buzzer, right? And kind of divert off and play in the playground, and then when the buzzer goes, you're re you are invited to go on the ride. So it's basically having something to do while you're waiting in the queue. So it's like going to Outback, kind of. <laughs> um, so when we were there in July, our littles didn't want to play. Our littles wanted to ride the ride, so of course we didn't we didn't divert off. But it's an interesting. It's a kind of a cool way of. Um, giving them something to do while they're waiting the 45 minutes, you know, you oh, just sure. get your spot, spot sure. back. So, but it is cool. The Storybrooke Circus back there has some amazing meet and greets with the characters. So it is worth going back there, even if you're not into writing uh, the Barnstormer or even Dumbo. Well, sure. But, and some fun shopping, some fun snacks back there. But I think those are that that's kind of a, an offset of Fantasyland. It's kind of its own land. But it's on the it's that transition between the two lands of Tomorrow, Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. Well, and a little history on that particular area. At one time, it was going to be or had been Disney World's or the Magic Kingdom's version of Toontown. Right. And I think that the idea was they were going to do the same thing that they did in Anaheim for Magic Kingdom. It didn't ever come to fruition. Mm. Um, it was just something that just. Well, what happened is Hollywood Studios happened. Yeah, yeah. So it's got its space. I mean, it's very, very busy, very popular. Um, with little bin, with little bitty ones. Oh, it's great. Sure, There's, sure, I can imagine that. It's a train stop along there too. If you watch, uh, do the train. Of course. Um, so, and that is again, I will reiterate about the character meet and greets. 
I like meeting Donald in the circus area. Yeah, I love meeting Donald there. Yeah. You know, he's he's the magician, um, fortune teller, mind reader, and in Pete's sideshow. And yeah, I, I love Donald there. Goofy is the daredevil. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that gets shot out of the cannon. Um, I'm, I, I think, no, Mickey is the magician, isn't he? I can't I remember. Don't remember. Okay. Anyway, um, you got Daisy back there. You've got Minnie back there, most likely with Mickey. Um, Daisy is in her own thing, doing her own thing, and I believe that she is a tightrope Tight walker, walker. Mm-hmm. and is she does she is her own billboard. She is not with Donald. She's her own thing. That's important. <laughs> okay, because Miss Daisy, she yeah. She, She's she can carry it all on her all own. All on her own. Yep. So you know. anyway, but it's a good spot. So you keep moving along. Tomorrowland. Now Tomorrowland is a space that I, I personally spend two rides and then I'm out. And it used to be one ride and I was out and now it's well that's a lie. I'm confusing my parks. It, Magic Kingdom. I'll do Carousel of Progress. Yep. Space Mountain. Okay. Tron. Okay, so that's People two. Mover. Oh, People Mover. Yeah, yeah. so there's okay. four in Tomorrowland that I'll ride, and then I'm out. But there's a lot more. There's Buzz Lightyear. There's um, the Laugh Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. Yes. There's, um, what else is in there? I think that's oh, pretty that's, much that's it. That's the other two things. Yeah, that's pretty um, much it. Tron I will ride. Yeah. So, and that's another fancy ride that you need to... Yeah, that get one. In a, a queue for. Yeah, you need to get your boarding pass, as it were, yeah. for that. Um, so good. That I'm hoping changes. Um, I'm hoping it changes. It's but coming on its year of being open, so it might. If they didn't drop it for Rise of the Resistance, they're not dropping it for Tron. It's not consistent with Rise anymore. Oh, you still have to get a. You still have to get. Oh, okay. Yeah. When there, last time we were there, we didn't have to. I didn't think, well, I thought, honestly, Rise. in Orlando, Rise of the Resistance was still no standby. No, there's a standby. There is? Yeah, we did a standby, yeah. Right on. Uh-huh. About time. Thank you, Disney. So, tr- I think we've spoken about Tron before. Briefly. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. If you are a child of the 80s. And you watch that movie pretty much every weekend. Yep. (laughs) Like we did. Yep. Um, And played it. I mean, it was, it is, the queue is very well designed. You are put into the grid. How they make that happen is really, really cool. There's enough point of views on it. I didn't get it because I, they are really um, particular about, uh, having cell phones or video equipment on the ride, yes, generally because of how you ride in it, um, it would I would find it challenging to have it, something because I like death grip to hold on. Um, that it is, you get into the um, and the way they make you get in the ride is like if you remember from the movie how it the uh, motorcycle thing. I don't even know that. Yeah. yeah, the light cycle. Yeah, it enveloped you and you became part of the cycle. Yes. And it became like you became a robot. That's how it feels like when you get in it and what it feels like. Cause you have to like really kind of jam your, not jam. Well, it is like you're jamming yourself in there and it, it, the pieces envelop you in it, into it. And you're like laying down on it. And then the launch of that thing is so good. It's, it's like, (sighs) this is the wrong franchise. I know, but it's so good. Um, the launch of that is equivalent to me as Rock and Roller Coaster. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. So, good. and that's All like, right. that is a fun, like, you are immediately in the ride, and that's the same way this launch is. It's like, you are immediately in the ride. And you're basically playing the game, and you're you're competing against another color, and um, it's really fun. It's great. Um, again, watch some point of views. It is, is one of the, I will always ride Tron. I will always ride People Mover. I will always ride Space Mountain. And I will always ride, um, what's the, my fourth one? 
People Mover, Carousel Progress. Yeah, Carousel Progress. Those I are had the, to those take are a minute four. because, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> those are my four, and, and I will actually, there's more for me to do in Tomorrowland and in Magic Kingdom that I choose to do than in Disneyland. Yeah, um, and that's been a topic of discussion among several of influencers mm-hmm. about exactly what the state of Tomorrowland is in Anaheim, mm-hmm. and it's not pretty. I mean, the it's not pretty. only thing I'll ride in Tomorrowland at Disneyland is Space Mountain. Yeah. Well, and for me, okay, again, we're going to talk about differences, and I'm going to make the hot take. The spirit, The Space Mountain in Disneyland is better than the Space Mountain in Orlando. Um, <laughs> and here's why. In Orlando, you are set front to back like you were in the bobsleds of the Matterhorn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Anaheim, you're sat side, side by, by side. side. Mm-hmm. And your seat has speakers and they do music in Anaheim. They don't do that in Orlando. No, it's piped in. Yeah. Well, no, not even on the ride. Not while you're riding. I have not honest to Pete, never paid attention because it's just so fast. It's okay. just like, Because in Anaheim, you got a soundtrack while you're riding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You it's know. Dick Dale. Yep. Well, no, actually, it's not. Is it? I Dick Dale's during that. the daytime. Got in it. In the evening, they do the same guy who was the composer for the soundtrack for The Incredibles. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's still good. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, regardless, Space Mountain is an OG ride. In well, no, he's not the original, but it came out before the uh, Space Mountain in Anaheim. Oh, it, in, in Magic, Magic Kingdom. Kingdom was Magic first. Kingdom was the first one. Yeah, um, and that's why I'll write it because honestly, it's a little bit longer, it's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit faster, it's a little bit mm-hmm. everything. But unfortunately, it's like that front to back, so. It's a little bit more chiropractic, just like Matterhorn. <laughs> I was saying, it's, and it's <laughs> being a tall kid, getting in and out of it is a little bit challenging. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see how you're going to be able to get in and out of it. Um, you'll be surprised. I'm able to get into some situations okay. that I didn't think I'd be just able to get out of, of. Like how your foot can't. Oh, yeah. Bend. It's, okay. Yeah. Getting it straightened out. Right. That's going to be that's an gonna issue. That's what I'm going to be interested in, especially yeah, that's like gonna those, be an issue. those rides. So it'll be, you know, some learning curves with that one. Exactly. Um, uh, and now my take on Tomorrowland in Magic Kingdom, I will definitely ride Space Mountain. Mm-hmm. I will definitely ride the People Mover mm-hmm. because again, World's Fair. And it's a great way to cool off, believe it or not. It can be. Just, you get to sit down for a good 15 minutes and just get the sights. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's... It's a World's Fair yeah. attraction. Yeah. I will do Carousel of Progress one time. I will not go back and do it again and again and again and again. Well, okay? it's a it's a, like a one time per yeah. Well, per visit per visit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a great big beautiful tomorrow again. World's Fair shining at the end of every day. Ugh. Great big beautiful tomorrow. It's better when they have like squirrels that suddenly get into the ride and start bouncing between the scenes. Um, it's just a dream away. It's it's better when all of a sudden John's hand falls off at the turn of the it's century. Not oh, it's great. Um, I love Carousel Progress. It's do not. Be- it's it's really fantastic when John the the animatronics face gets stuck. No, that's beautiful. Great. That's I love beautiful. It. I think the Sherman Brothers are amazing and it's a great little ditty and it can get stuck in my head totally never fine. i will never take anything away about the sherman brothers so good. i will never I say anything that. wrong about the sherman brothers or oh. bad about the sherman brothers okay but i do believe that yes carousel of progress has outlived its relevance i like the nostalgia of it exactly which uh, is agreed which is great again not not really saying much about that. I love the nostalgia again. I like it. I said, it's one of those 1964 World's Fair type things. Beautiful. Love that. And you get to cool off in there because it's air conditioned. <laughs> you get to yeah. sit for a good 20 minutes and yeah. rest. But so, yeah, again, it's one of those where for me, it it's sing-along. every visit, it's a one and done. It's one. Yeah, you go you in know? and you, when you need to cool off on that side of the park, for sure. Okay, yeah. yeah. But again, it's a one and done for me and that's that. Um 
I will do Autopia if there is a little that really, really wants me to go along. Okay. I I did it with Cat. Yeah. You know, I I will do that again, sure, for a little one that wants to go along. Sure. We always have those in our lives, so. I am very bitter that they took out the submarine ride in Tomorrowland there. The reason I am bitter about it, because it was themed to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That's why I'm bitter. Mm. I love that movie. Yes, you do. And another one we watched often. Yes, and okay, we, like we've Kraken. done we've we, we done a moment of silence every time, and now let's do oh, a moment of just... silence for Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Okay, cut print. Moving there on. Go. Anyway, um. Where Tron is now is where a good portion of that submarine ride uh-huh. was. I at, know that or at least the Q area. I know how you feel about the submarine ride, but until you ride Tron, you oh, I, I, I know, <laughs> totally I know, it's it. it's going to redeem everything for <laughs> me, and I know it will. It. And I want to go do this ride so bad that it hurts. I want to go into this gift shop in Tomorrowland yeah, hey, just so I can. Yes. Buy your disc. I well, I don't really care about that anymore because those are so limited to where they can be used yeah. and why. Yeah, you know, um, I do want to get the jacket that has the attachment mm-hmm. for the disc on the back <laughs> of it. I want that jacket. I also want to get several of the Flynn's Arcade T-shirts. Yeah, because Flynn's Arcade. Yeah, that's you know, yeah. I mean, to. come on, come on. Do you know what we haven't done yet on this side of the park, which is very non-us? Are you talking about ice cream? We haven't had a snack. We don't. What did I just say? Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. just I'm not a big, you know, I'm yeah. gonna go savory. I mean, we talked about Friar Tux, but I just it's this is one of those parks like in Disneyland. It's a tour of food, and then you ride a ride next to it. Right here, I it's just I have not found those niches yet and those spaces yet. I have not had great luck in getting snacks in Tomorrowland. Right. Okay. I I just haven't. It's the other side. Yeah. It's either Adventureland, Frontierland, Main Street, Norland Square, or sorry, Liberty Square. Liberty Square. Square. Yeah, I, I, I do that to you. I do that to you all the time. Yeah, I got to remember no, which park I'm at. There is just like, yeah, Tomorrowland's not a good par- part of the park to find a snack. Right. So if you're wanting to look for that, um, go to the other side. Yeah, Go exactly. to Main Street. Well, yeah, I, I, you're close enough to Main Street. Just By go now, there. Yeah. Just yeah. go there. Okay. And that's that. I think that's where we're headed now. Is we're headed we back are. over to yeah. Main Street. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we're going to Main Street, I know what I want. What are you gonna get? Oh, hot dog. I'm going to Casey's Corner. Oh my God. <laughs> Stupid me. Two reasons. Dumb. Hot dog, and the piano player. Yeah. Oh, and a Coke. <gasps> yep. well, yeah. Did you hear the big scandal about the shooting gallery? No. Oh. oh. Disney's no longer going to have a partnership with Coca Cola. They're moving to Pepsi. It was on the internet, so it's true. Oh, okay. I I felt that was coming. Um, did you did you hear about this on Monday? Probably. Okay. No, then, it wasn't Monday. Okay. It I was would before be, then. I'd be very wary if you heard it. I was on gonna Monday. say it was on the internet, so it's true. Okay. Well, there we are. Um, the other scandal that I'm going to bring up about Frontierland. Oh, I know. Yeah. They're taking out the shooting gallery, which is a travesty in your world, for a DVC lounge, for a Disney Vacation Club lounge. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously, y'all. Let's anger all the DVC people at our... What? What? I know. It'll be in Disneyland. What are you doing? What are you doing? It'll be in Disneyland for you. Uh, I know. You... (laughs) I like the waveform on that one. Anyway. You love your shooting gallery. Yes, and I am... I'm bitter... (laughs) I'm still going to give you my money, Disney, but I'm bitter. You can go shoot in Disneyland and not in in Walt Disney World. Well, I know. And and honestly, it's okay because there's enough differences between yeah. Magic Kingdom you know, and Disneyland that it's okay. We didn't talk about the Hall of Presidents. Yeah, we left Liberty Square. Yeah. Hall of Presidents is another go sit down, get out of the heat for a moment. Um it's a good for the history buffs in your crew. 
Um, they've yes, recreated. It is. They've recreated the uh, Oval Office inside. Well, kinda. Kinda ish. Kind of the White House, but it's kind of cool. So you and they have some cool historical doc. Well, replicas of historical documents and replicas of historical things. So it is great for the history buff in your life if right. you want to do that. The the artifacts display and the historical displays are very very good. Okay, um, that museum aspect of it's very, very nice. Neat. Yeah, the animatronics that they do for the presidents, it's worth it just to go in there and watch each one's reaction when they announce them, or the standing up and how they look at each other and the, right. yeah, the acknowledgement. Some, that's cool. There are some that don't stand. Yeah, no, right. But watching that reaction, watching the animatronic, how it moves. Uh -huh. And what it does, I mean, when when Jimmy Carter stands up and the lights hit him, he blinks as though the lights, lights bug him. him. Yeah. Like, okay. Oh, it's it's bright bright just light, bright light. Yeah. Oh, it's neat. It's cool. really cool. And that if you're the, uh, one who appreciates that technology, that's a great place to go in and see it in action so it's neat so we didn't talk about hall of presence that is in liberty square but right. since we're making our way back kind of the to the hub that center well we could pop over there we could pop over there yeah. there is a very yummy snack cart on the way it is the egg roll cart and they have different okay. flavored egg rolls and it is yeah. fantastical and see that there there's another one that's on my list okay i want yes and thank you i want the cheeseburger egg roll yes please and thank you okay yes. um i heard at one time they did a pizza egg roll yes and i got a, a ham and cheese egg roll okay so good so you remember those little pizza pocket type things those little yes. pizza treats or whatever and you get one that's about this big it's so good they're and really I want good that. They're really I good. That. So that's kind of a fun little snack. So Tomorrowland, you're not going to find anything. Just bebop over. It's right out, right. literally right across the from the friend statue. Well, and like I said, I've never had any luck on either coast in Tomorrowland with food. Yeah. So, so as in every park, so we've kind of hit the spaces where the rides are. We're now into kind of that shopping space or where the entertainment's at. The castle front it did, but Magic Kingdom, they always do kind of shows. Right. Um, this is the castle that you can't walk exactly. in and out of. The exactly. castle in Disneyland, you can't. So what they do with the castle is they do some fun shows. They have some good presentations throughout the day. So that's something in the center at the end of Main Street that you can participate in. But in true Disney fashion, they have a fireworks show. Oh, wow. Are we already at that We're point? We're already at the fireworks. It's getting dark. Mm -hmm. Is Disney after dark now? Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, sun's gone down. There we are. Dinner. Again, we've kind of talked about options for dinner. You can do a sit down. You can do counter service. Right. Um, and Crystal there, Palace is there. There we go. There we go. For a character breakfast or a character interaction. Um, that's the Winnie the Pooh. That's folks, the Winnie right? the Pooh. Okay. Um, Beauty and the Beast. What is I? There's a. Um, you can eat in the castle in the beast ca uh, castle. Oh yeah, that one is yeah the be our guest. Be our thing. guest. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy the food in be our guest. I really like it. We did it for breakfast. I did. It, I've done it for dinner. Okay. Um, I I like it. I think the food is good. Um, okay. the gray stuff is it is yes. Okay. That's all I sure. Have to say. Okay. Yes. Um. But that, like, so there's some kind of fun little, and both of those have a character interaction. Okay. Um, if you're curious, I, and then we talked about the food in Liberty Square and Frontierland right. over there. Right. But one of the cool things that they do for the fireworks that I've done that you haven't had a chance to do, but it's similar to what we did with the dessert party for exactly. World of Color is you, they have a dessert party and it gives you kind of priority seating for the fireworks display in the the kind of the grassy knoll area which in front is of the castle. honestly in my mind a better option in magic kingdom than it would be in disneyland yes okay 100 percent. and the reason is is because the the audience for the fireworks in anna in orlando excuse me can get unreal oppressive it's a lot it's huge yeah, it's oppressive so Dessert offerings, a great again, great dessert. They have some savory offerings. They have some of those egg rolls that are amazing. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. And they have a kid friendly menu. So you get to you eat 
and then you can be escorted over to your priority seating. So you can you get some timing things that you have to work out, but um, it is well worth the price of it. It is a little pricey, but it is again something that I would personally budget for um, for a if I was going to go to the parks and you know if when I go back to the parks again, I, was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> um, I would budget for it because it was it made getting a spot for the fireworks a lot easier and the fireworks shows um, in Magic Kingdom are spectacular. They do projections on the castle. Um, they do projections down Main Street. So you kind of get that great view of all of it. But right. it is a classic, beautiful Disney fireworks show to end your evening if you want it to be the end of your evening. It's great. Now, seeing that, and knowing that the amount of crowds that gather for this thing, mm-hmm. how early do you think you should be hunting down a spot and start defending that spot? Non, non-dessert non party person? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, do you want to give up half of your evening? Well, I was going to say, it's a good chunk of the evening. It's a good chunk. Sit there yeah. There are people who start um, gathering and marking spots a good two hours before fireworks. Fireworks are usually in the summer around 9.15, 9.30. So that means you're sitting there for two hours. Um, in off-peak times, it's 8.30. So, you know, any way you look at it, you are giving up two hours of your of your time oh, just yeah. to sit. Yeah. If you time it right, there's usually a, a stage show. So you get that right. in there. Right. Um, it does force sitting and waiting. But, yeah. But... The, you still risk the well not you still risk there's still that oppression like people come and get in your spot it's oh, yeah. not like you know it's this a lot there's a lot of humanity in a tiny tiny little spot and it feels like the whole earth is there well yeah whole earth is there right there with you on top on of top you. of you so yeah. it's you know you just have to it's part of the magic <laughs> <laughs> um you know it is. I, I don't. I'm not giving any excuses. It is what it is, kind of thing. But that's why me personally, I would, for my piece, do the dessert party and have a dedicated spot that I could be in. And that was going to be my next and, question. Yeah. Is it worth the money? For me, yes. For okay. my peace of okay. mind, for not and knowing how like you get your spot. Sure. And yeah, you have sure. to share it, but it's not that oppressive human of pushing in people not following the rules like you, you know it just protects a lot of peace in okay. my world. So yes, I would do it. Okay. Okay. So there you have it folks. Honestly, if you can afford it, do, do the it. dessert party. Mm-hmm. Um with and with me <laughs> I love the fireworks, sure, but I will not go out of my way to defend a spot all night for no. it. Um, it. And yes, the fireworks in Magic Kingdom are spectacular. Mm-hmm. Okay. They are, in my mind, a not-miss thing. And if you are back at your resort already, believe it or not, at the Grand Floridian, there are places to be to watch the fireworks is, at Magic yeah. Kingdom. Yeah, so that was going to be another point. Like, honestly, yeah. I'd go, I would get a dinner reservation at the Contemporary and then go onto go. the ca- the balcony yep. and watch it or yep. get a dinner reservation at Polly or someplace like that and then just sit at Ohana <laughs> by the window yeah. because you are on a dead straight yeah, line and they with the fireworks where they should be seen and they pipe in the soundtrack and you yep. can eat it's so there are options to pull your stuff out where you still get a great view of the fireworks do you get to see the projections on this no but it's it's the fireworks show so right you know exactly there are and, ways of doing it um I'm, I'm just i'm gonna say this again i'm gonna call him out again i gotta call out mammoth club again um we molly your friends molly you and i girl watching the fireworks it you and I it's it's gonna it's gonna be yeah a blubber fest this is the way this is the way it I I gotta do it because I mean that would be that would be my thing and yes Alan I will sing all the Beauty and the Beast songs (laughs) with you all of them because yes and we just wanna be your friends yeah that's all and the reason we call you out is because we love yeah. Okay. We love your content. We love what you do. And Thank you for doing it. Exactly. 
you are also part of my inspiration for mm. doing what I'm doing here. Yeah. This Alice fed Alice baited the hook, and that was it. So Alice baited the hook, and you guys were just more inspiration to just get me into this. And here we are, here, sitting talking to you for an hour. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Anyway, so we fireworks are, are done. Yeah, we are an hour in. We are an hour in. That's why I said it. fireworks are done. Um, do not leave the park right now. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. It's not worth you. It's not worth the crowd. So there's two things you can do. Depending on where you're at and what side of the hub, the center hub, we call it the hub, you're on. I would duck in and go to Pirates and ride Pirates. I'd go back to Haunted Mansion. This is a great time to kind of get one of those rides one, that has a long line that you can get a shorter line. One Big last Thunder Mountain. Ride. Yeah, Big one Thunder last Mountain. Ride. So some of those kind of opposite direction of crowds. Oh, and Big Thunder Mountain at night. It's so good. It's fun. Big Thunder it's Mountain fun. while the fireworks are going on. Okay. Okay, yeah. So if you're not necessarily so concerned about watching the show in front of the castle, but wanting to see the fireworks, a great place to watch the fireworks as well is behind the castle near the carousel. Exactly. So that is an alternative place. Do you remember when we were walking to go... (laughs) Hunt down the nuts. Hunt down the roasted almonds that (laughs) did not exist. (laughs) Another story. And we were... And all of a sudden, (laughs) the aerials started going off. Yeah. And it was that... (laughs) So... It's a great, like, the, I, ha, I have a, a vlogger, a YouTuber that I watch, um, Living in Diz, and he does often behind the castle, and it's a really great spot, so. Right on. Really fun. Like, there's alternative ways, and then you can bop, bebop into Peter Pan, yeah. or yeah. Little Mermaid, or Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, or some of those rides, you exactly. know, so don't leave the park right away. I think that's a big tip that we want to put out there. Now I do understand if yeah. you have littles. I was gonna. I just went there. They yeah, are mm-hmm. just dead. Done. They're already asleep. <laughs> well, not even that. I mean, there are they're they're on that last bit of that fuse, and they're mm-hmm. about to go nuclear. Get okay. them out of there. Yeah. <laughs> if you can do it and do it quickly, go ahead. Get which, them out of the park. Which is why it might behoove you to watch the fireworks closer to the train station than yes. necessarily up close to the castle because then you could just get and go. Yeah, closer to the gate to where be, all you have to do is turn around and, and walk out yeah. and head for the buses. Plan for your exit, not your entrance. There, <laughs> gee, where have we heard that I before? <laughs> <laughs> Park for your exit, not your entrance. Oh, every time. Every <laughs> time. Yeah. Because, yeah. Hey, it's I, good counsel. It's good counsel. Because it's the way. Yeah. It's the I way. It. So, yeah. Um, I think that's... Well, and your, your day is done. Magic Kingdom is done. Um, those are kind of our thoughts on Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you park hop, you always have the all, option of coming back to things. Um, Indeed. I mean, there's a couple of things we didn't mention. There is a mickey meet and greet in the theater in town square oh right on yes so that's, right. that's, that's right. the place that if you definitely have to meet mickey you can get yes. yourself a lightning lane yes. for that you can sign yourself up for that highly recommended the interaction is personal and it's and mickey's great in there and okay you know, again we need to reiterate for our certain characters where you actually have to do a sign, a lightning lane or a sign or up standby yeah or you stand by exactly to mm-hmm. go and meet these characters um, there is a line for it. And that's a difference between Disneyland and Disney World or Magic Kingdom. Disneyland, it, there's a lot of wa- characters walking around and you just get exactly. to see it's, them. And you it's have, more intimate. Yeah, it's yeah. a little, you know, they're, are they, they're parked at a, next to a fence and then that's where the meet and greet happens. Whereas exactly. in, in Magic Kingdom, it is a little more dictated and controlled. So that's just right. a big difference character if you're hunting characters. So... Yeah, I mean, that's there it is. I mean, now you get back to the hotel. You got your three options to get back to the hotel. Same ways you uh, got in. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you're at a farther out resort, bus is the mm-hmm. option. Um, if you're there on one of the resorts on the Seven Seas Lagoon, you boat, take a boat or monorail. Mm-hmm. Um, when I leave the park, I like to do the monorail because I like the circuit mm-hmm. back to the hotel. Okay, I like that. That's yeah. that's that, but that's that's me. Okay. However, if you do take the boat, uh, you can get the electric 
they don't run the boats during that. No, they don't. But you can stand in line and wait for the boat while that goes by. That's true. And That's it's true. really fun and really cute. And if you yeah. time it right, you can be sitting on your boat watching the electric boat parade. Waiting for it to be finished. Waiting for it to be finished. And then yeah. so you're on the water and it's really cool. So anyway, I really enjoyed that piece of it. It's really cool. That's OG. That's like. Uh, it. Not necessarily. It was about a year after it's, opening. It's an old enough that it's been going on for oh, a real yeah. long time. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, it was like 72 that yeah. they put it out. But, yeah. And so. it came out before the electric light parades. It's so good. It's really, yeah. really cute. There's a nice, lovely piece of it. All right, Magic Kingdom. We love it. Those are our thoughts on it. That's how we handle it. Um, our approaches to it. It's definitely a very full long day it is <laughs> it's a long day it's a long day um but if you again if you have a chance to park up you have a chance of going back and doing some things so always protect your peace exactly and this is a park with that's important it's important it's yeah. very it's important a lot of humanity so a lot of times yeah make so. sure you rest protect your peace do what you need to do make sure that you're fed make sure that you have water always always hydrate always hydrate it's so, important yeah. hail so. hydrate <laughs> um all right next Two, in two weeks, we're going to Epcot. Okay. We're going to the second park. We're in chronological order. And this park has grown on me, and we'll talk about that. I'm still on the fence, but we'll have fun. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.